Hi everyone, welcome to my talk. Thank you for attending. I'm my name is Holly Han. I'm a postdoc um, at Los Alamos National Laboratory based in New Mexico, United States. And at the same time, I'm a volunteer early career researcher at ICCI at the COP meeting in Dubai. So today I'll tell you um, about my research, but also cover a, a higher level of climate interactions between uh, interactions between ice sheet climate and sea level changes. The slide shows the surface temperature change between the 1901 to 2021. Um, it is actually showing a difference from a climate, sorry, temperature, global temperature average for respective years relative to the average value between the 20, 1901 to 2000. And you can see that the global temperature actually has been rising at the rate of 0 0.09 Celsius per decade. And so this warming was clearly due to a lot of uh, components. And however, the black line here that shows the observations of global surface temperature since 1950 can only be explained when we incorporate the greenhouse gases emitted by human activities shown in red and the natural causes shown in um, green and aerosols due to human ex activities that reflect sunlight off um, in the air shown in blue and the gray, gray color shown showing the combined natural causes that is actually matching the blue curve, the observation lines. So in the latest IPCC report, sixth um, report, said that anthropogenic climate changes is unequivocal and ongoing. So there is no question as to the reason for the current rate of climate change is due to climate uh, human activities. So what is the problem with recent climate change trend? This plot is showing uh, the temperature changes um, through the last thousand years, about thousand years, and this is also famously called the hockey stick plot by Michael Mann et al. And it's showing the temperature changes in the Northern Hemisphere uh, compared to the average value between average taken between 1961 to 1990. And you can really see that in the blue curve, the temperature changes recorded in the natu natural, nature, natural resources like tree rings, co uh, corals, ice floors, and historical records have been quite flat compared to the rate we've been experiencing in the past decades. And so the problem is that this change has been is too fast. Obviously, there has been changes through the last thousands of years um, due to natural causes, but because of the human activities, we are actually accelerating this rate of climate change or global temperature warming. So going forward, what is going to happen is something that we everyone is curious about. And so here is um, show here uh, the plot is showing the projections of global temperature change through the 21st century. And all the values are comparison relative to the average taken between year 1995 and year 2014. And this blue line is what, the, what we agreed upon in the Paris Agreement. So this is about 1.5 degrees Celsius warming by the end of the century. And then as you go higher and higher in number, it represents that the forcing is stronger and warming is stronger. So we can see that the projections really starts to diverge around year 2040, uh, that's about in 20 years time. And it implies that the decision that we make today will really matter tomorrow. And it really also implies that the importance of taking immediate action. So what does the spatial pattern of warming across the globe look like, um, taking these different scenarios, these line scenarios into spatial patterns? On the first uh, right top is showing the annual mean temperature change by the end of the 21st century, when we take the path of warming the globe by 1.5 degrees. And 
on the top right is changing two degrees and the left bottom is changing three degrees and the left right bottom plot is the temperature um, projected when we in the scenario of four degrees of global warming. And we really can, we can see that in the first top two um, plots, the Arctic regions are amplified due to the polar amplifications. And so the average values, when it's mapped across the global, its um, global coverage, you can really see that the red regions are going to experience a lot higher global warming compared to the average value. And at the bottom, when we go beyond three or four degrees, then almost the entire globe gets really, really red experiencing higher than four to five degrees of warming. So looking at the difference between two degrees versus 1.5 degrees warming at the very top on the um, top on the right hand side, you can see that it's already pretty, well, we're taking the only quote unquote only 0 0.5 degrees of difference globally average value. But when we look at the spatial pattern, it's going to be a lot higher than 0 0.5 degrees up to 1.5 to 2 degrees. So we always have to think this globally average value in terms of spatially varying values and more like a globally average value rather than just thinking that this is only a small number that isn't going to cause any trouble for us. And this difference plot obviously gets really red, gets redder and redder as you go. Um, higher degrees. So at the bottom, difference between four degrees warming scenario versus 1.5 degree warming scenario, um, the difference is going to reach more than 2.5 degrees. So what are the consequences of global warming in different levels? Um, this is showing the pattern of global temperature by the end of the century. And as we saw before, and at the same time, we're going to have really more exacerbated climate events. For example, the 10 year event, which means that an event, climate extreme event will, would, have, would have happened once in 10 years during the, in the pre-industrial climate. At present day, it is now likely uh, happening at 2.8 times. Um, per 10 years. And when and if you compare the projected differences between 1.5 degrees warming scenario versus two degrees, that is now jumping up to 4.1 times more and five times, 5.6 times more respectively. And as for the 50 year event, again, if you compare 1.5 degrees warming scenario versus 2.5 warming scenarios, um, what used to happen every 50 years is going to happen 8.6 times and 11.12.9 times more mm -hmm. um, in respective scenarios. So we can really see that this small shift in global average temperature is going to cause very dramatic um, consequences when it comes to climate extreme events. So how what, what will the sea level look like? in the future in response to global warming. This is showing the rate of sea level change or sea level change in the past 21st, 21st century. We had the, uh, the tide gauge records suggest that the sea level has been rising, sea level has been rising at 0 0.7 millimeters per year for the first part of the 21st century. 20th century and at two millimeters per year at the uh, mid to towards the end of the 21st, 20th, 20th century. And then right now we're seeing at the end of the 20, 20th century, we've been seeing about 3.3 millimeters per year sea level rise rate. So the question is what is going to happen in the future? So same as similar to projections of global temperature, this is called projections of sea level in different scenarios. And the green uh, blue line RCP 2.6 scenario is where we keep the low emission as we've agreed upon in, during the Paris Agreement. And as you go redder, redder and redder, sea level is going to 
um, increase more and the possibility of having experiencing dramatic sea level rise increases as well. So where would where would the um, this the sources of this dramatic sea level change or future sea level change are mostly the polar ice sheets in Greenland and Antarctica. In Greenland, there's about six meters equivalent sea level ice volume locked up. And in Antarctica, there's about um, 87, 87, 80, uh, sorry, 57 and 58 meters of sea level equivalent ice volume locked up in, in Antarctica. So that's that's a pretty big amount. And so what would happen when when we melt these ice sheets, when these melt ice sheets start melting, um, our intuition or our intuitive imagination suggests that sea level will rise globally uniformly, but actually that's not true. Um, sea level actually change, sea level change comp pattern is pretty complex. So for example, in the green, and when Greenland ice sheet melts, um, the bottom plot is what the pattern would look like. And this is basically showing if one melts one millimeter, one melts Greenland ice sheet um, to raise sea level by one millimeters per year, then the regions in gray will experience sea level fall and regions in blue will experience sea level rise, but smaller than the value of globally, global mean value. And red and orange, yellow, orange, red regions are going to experience sea level rise greater than globally mean, global mean average value. And this is what sea level pattern would look like when one melts Antarctic ice sheet to raise sea level by one millimeters per year. Um, West Antarctic ice sheet to be more precise. So we can really see that the sea level change respond in response to ice sheet melting has its own fingerprint. And the physics of that is the following. First of all, when ice sheet melts, there is this um, instantaneous and slow deformation of the solid earth. So more like uplifting solid earth in response to unloading of the ice. And ice sheet is a giant mass. So when it's there, it attracts ocean water close to its body. But as it melts away, the ocean water near yeah. ice will migrate away from the retreating ice sheet. So the combination of this gravitational weakening of gravitational attraction of ice onto ice, thus um, causing sea surface height to fall combination of that effect and also the uplift of the solid earth together causes the local sea level fall near the retreating region. And that's what's happening in these gray regions um, in the bottom pots. At the same time, um, ice sheet retreated, the retreating ice sheet in the polar region causes shifting in the rotation vector, vector of the earth. So it also then imprints this quadrature, um, quadratic, or quadrature pattern on the globe. So all these effects together are called GRD effects, gravitational, rotational, and deformational effects. And the importance of GRD effects is that it allows us, when we understand these processes, it allows us to fingerprint sea level change associated with ice melting. And also these GRD effects in turn influence the ice sheet behavior. So this feed, there is this feedback between ice sheet and GRD effects. So ice sheet changes in response to climate change and GRD effects response in response to ice sheet uh, in turn affects the ice sheet dynamics. So this feedback is really important to capture in projecting both ice sheet and sea level. And so this GRD effect is especially important to capture in ice sheet dynamics when ice sheet, dyna ice sheet is uh, based in marine regions. So that means that if ice sheet is sitting below the ocean, um, ice sheet is pretty unstable. Uh, well, especially, um, well, I guess I have to first, I'll first in introduce 
the dynamics of it or physics of it. So when an ice sheet is sitting on a bed, especially when the bed slope, bed is going, um, the depth of the bed is increasing, going inland, and the ice sheet loses mass across its grounding line, which is where the ice sheet starts to float into, um, into the ocean. And so the thickness of the ice sheet at the grounding line is proportional to the depth of the ocean there. And so if the ice sheet is sitting on a bedrock that is going deeper and deeper in land, then that means that the ice sheet thickness at the grounding line, as the grounding line retreats backward, is also going to increase. And therefore, there is increase in flux of the ice across the grounding line. And that um, is going to cause this feedback and runaway effect of ice sheet. So when we incorporate the GRD effects, which captures this uplift of the solid earth and dropping of the sea surface height, causing local sea level fall, then um, now what it used to be on the retrograde slope, um, as the ice sheet loses its best, the solid earth is bumping up and the sea level is falling. So that causes or that feeds back into the ice sheet and act, act as a stabilizing factor. So this is a demonstration of using a simple model um, when there is no sea level feedback or GRD feedback on a marine based ice sheet on a retrograde bed slope. If you just let the run ice sheet just retreat or evolve, then it's going to um, experience this runaway effect. So going from um, very end, like the larger ice sheet in the blue and then going all the way down to uh, the light blue color scheme. And so this is ex this ice sheet experiences what is called marine ice sheet instability. On the other hand, when, when one incorporates sea level feedback, then the local sea level will fall and act as a stabilizing factor on, onto this marine-based ice sheet. And you can see that the ice sheet actually doesn't go through the runaway effect. And this effect has been shown um, in the last decades by a number of uh, numerical modeling groups in, uh, across, the, across the world. So this GRD effect is really important to capture in places like East, West Antarctica, where you can see that the Antarctic bed elevation goes below zero, which means that the bedrock is below sea level. And when you look at the cross section of the bedrock in Antar West Antarctica, you can actually see that the ice sheet is marine based and then it sits on that retrograde bedrock. So this GRD effect is potentially very important to be captured in this um, setting in the West Antarctic region. And also, obviously, um, a couple of days ago, Chris Stokes gave us a talk on uh, focusing on East Antarctica, the East Antarctic ice sheet, and there are three marine base ice sheets that are also behaving or situated in a pretty similar setting as the West Antarctic ice sheet here. So going into uh, my topic of research, this GRD effects or sea level feedback um, is important in important for projecting ice sheet contribution to sea level. And there is this paper that was published in 2020 by Sarah Seattle, who did this amazing work of collaborating and combining all the projections from um, ice sheet modelers across the world and provided the projections of sea level um, in over the 21st century. And these all different color schemes or lines are projections of sea level by all different ice sheet modeling groups across the world. world. But in this um, plot, there are no GRD effects. There are no ice sheet models that, that are who's capturing GRD effects. And that is really not to blame because um, GRD effects, or what is also called, used to be called, G, what is also known as GIA effects in the paleo community, used to be known as really important for long time scale um, ice dynamics, but not really for the future, like short term, decadal, or even centennial time scale ice projections. 
So the GRD effects have not been really captured in this future ice sheet modeling community work. And so these ice sheet models either assume that the sea level change is globally uniform, or they just don't have sea level as a component at all. Um, so here I'm working at Los Alamos National Laboratory. I'm using um, US Department of Energy ice sheet model component of the Earth system model, MALI. And so I've taken this model and I've um, coupled, or in, a, in an, an easier term, I've made the ice sheet to be able to capture the GRD effects and ran through a variety of scenarios of ISMIP 6. And I don't know why this text keeps coming up. It doesn't show up on my slides, but I think it's, yes. So ignore the text at the um, in the middle. Um, ISMIP 6 published or announced a new protocol in which the climate forcings are extended up to 2300 as opposed to 21st, uh, 2100. So these are all different type of experiments, but I'm focusing only on few. Um, so I've taken some high end and low end forcing scenarios and applied to the Mali ice sheet model and also the coupled Mali and sea level model. And so it is showing the sea level projection of by Mali through the next uh, 280 years. Uh, the blue line is showing the control um, results, control scenario where the forcing, climate forcing is just fixed to present day and we're not really changing anything. And in the blue line is the low end scenario where it's close to the Paris Agreement goal, which is about 1. Point, which is 1.5 degrees scenario warming. And then the red line is a um, little bit higher end climate uh, temperature rise of about three degrees or four degrees and same for the purple line at the bottom but using different climate model so the dashed line here is showing the projection of ice sheet model when it doesn't capture grd effects and the solid lines here now are showing the results of the model that captures grd effects and how to see this uh how to interpret this results is you can see that the lines are a little bit higher when the solid lines are sitting higher and when you when you're capturing grd effects and that means that the ice sheet is melting less and so the y-axis is sea level rise um, in meters and x-axis is here um, until from 2015 up to 2300 and you can really see that this strength of the forcing in the very high end forcing scenario or strength of the sea level feedback more precisely is really strong it um maintains or retains more about retains about 30 percent more ice when grd effects is captured and in number it's about um, 0 0.8 meters of sea level equivalent ice volume and so and then if you go to lower and lower enforcing then the amount of or the strength of sea level feedback gets smaller but actually the time it takes for ice sheet to melt the same amount gets it increases much uh, much more so basically in order to melt the same amount of ice in when we capture and share the effects there's about um, 40 years of delay, which is still um, pretty long for a policy time scale. Um, but when you look at the blue lines and red lines, then the delay um, duration or delay time is, gets longer. For example, for the red line, the delay would be about 100 years or 80 years. And then for the blue line, it, it's just, yeah, gets way more way longer so it doesn't really we don't really see the same amount of ice melting in this blue low end forcing scenario so it really means that in this 1.5 degree warming scenario um, we can save a lot more ice um, 
So there is, it's a hopeful message that I see from this research, uh, this results. Just looking at the spatial pattern of changes in the control run where we keep the climate change um, not zero, so keeping the present day climate. And yet we can see that the changes on the right hand side at 21st, 20, 2100, year 2200, and year 2300, there is still loss going on, uh, shown in brown and yellow regions specifically focusing on the West Antarctic region. So that's that's where the Thwaites Glacier or so-called Doomsday, Doomsday Glacier is um, located. And this is really the key glacier in Antarctica right now uh, that everyone's concerned about uh, for um, potential contributor to future sea level rise. And so I'm just picking the very high end uh, scenario, the UK ESM SSB 5, 8.5 forcing, where we've seen this really more than two meters of sea level rise and the strong sea level feedback effects. The plots here on the left show the changes relative changes in ice thickness relative to 2015 at 2100, 2200, and 2300, and then the final ice thickness at 2300. You can see that all the ice shelves or floating ice in the Filchner-Roni and Ross ice shelf really all go away. And also um, same for the West Antarctic ice sheet in the Thwaites region. And the difference in ice thickness changes when we incorporate the GRD effects versus not, not incorporating GRD effects. We can see that these effects last long and by the end of 2300, there's a lot more ice surviving in the Thwaites region shown in red right here. And that is again, going back to this sea level fall or deformation GRD effects shown in this plot right here, where the brown regions are showing where the sea level, where sea level has fallen um, more than uh, when we don't incorporate GRD effects. So this, this plot is really to show this, how the feedback, capturing the feedback provided, uh, capturing feedback of GRD effects in our ice sheet projections change our projections by much. Um, and shows huge differences in ice thickness, especially in the region of our interest at the moment. So this is another great thing about um, capturing GRD effects is that one can actually predict pattern of sea level change associated with ice sheet, change, ice sheet changes. So as we've seen in the previous plots where those, those lines showed global mean, globally average mean sea level change, here we can actually see where on the, around the earth um, is going to experience sea level rise or sea level fall. And so I'm taking the configuration from the initial condition at 2015 and in the results where GRD effects are on. So these plots show the difference, drastical difference, drastic difference in ice thickness, especially in these Western part of regions. And so when you go from here to here, this is what you're going to, what we're going to see in terms of sea level change pattern. So you can really see that in the red regions, the saturated regions along the coastline of Antarctica is where it experienced sea level fall. And because ice sheet was lost and then the solid earth uplifted and sea surface height dropped. So this local sea level fall is shown in these red regions. And as you go further and further away, the blue regions are experiencing sea level rise um, more than globally mean a globally averaged value. So um, I just wanted to go back to the point where, or bring up a point where I'm doing this climate science or this topic of research of my interest, but also I'm more motivated to continue this research because it's not only about understanding physical processes, but it is also about understanding um, our world in a more hu humanistic way, um, so to speak. 
this is really showing that regardless of where you melt the ice from, either from the Northern Hemisphere or from the from Antarctica, the most vulnerable countries in the equator, uh, countries to sea level rise is in situated in the equatorial region. And so they are going to experience sea level rise higher than global mean sea level, regardless of where we melt ice from. And just showing the CO2 emission per person um, around the globe, these equatorial regions, these countries have contributed almost nothing. Um, I was talking to a, a Jamaican seaweed farmer yesterday at the cryospheric pavilion, and he was really concerned and he was bringing up the point where his country contributed about 0.04% of the total CO2 emission, CO2 emitted um, in the world. So yeah, just bringing the human humanity point of view um, to research. And then the bottom plot shows the impacts of climate change around the world and the red plot is uh, red regions are where it's more vulnerable to climate change and we can really see that these regions are where they're less developed and the main reasons why these de less developed countries are more vulnerable to sea level rise and climate change in overall is because they're not only geographically disadvantaged but also they're currently economically underdeveloped so they are more um, yeah, they can't really manage the adaptation mitigation effectively by themselves. So it is great that the loss and damage fund at COP28 and Dubai this year has been finalized, but obviously we have a long way to go in terms of raising that fund from million dollars, hundreds of million dollars to billions of dollars. So let's, let's, where, let's see where the COP takes us. Um, yeah, so this is a justice problem in humanity. And so I think that as an early career research um, researcher through ICCI at COP this year, I'm not only being very motivated and more inspired by talking to people from all around the world, scientists, general pu public and policymakers, and I'm really happy to have found more context in two weeks. <clears throat> I, where I can fit in my fit my research into. So I just wanted to leave that word of appreciation and thank you to um, everyone again for attending my talk. Um, and this is the summary. Uh, I'll leave it to it. And yeah, I guess that's 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 my. Um,